You can grow food on dead soil and 80% of Europe's land and sea is in poor condition. We need a European law to restore nature, to help farmers, families, all of us. But yet, when we try to do this, the Conservatives here in the European Parliament try to block it. Mohammed, welcome. Why do we need a nature restoration law? I mean, I think you've said it quite uh, clearly in the introduction. On that soil, we can grow any crops. And if you take climate change seriously, we need to make sure our ecosystem works. Science is very clear. Without a working ecosystems, without making sure that our uh, nature is restored, all our climate policies will not be successful. And now to you, César. Welcome. Thank you. Actually, what does the nature restoration law do? Okay, this law, um, I think, contributes to recuperate these uh, ecosystems, Mohasset, and the habitats, also, also species, that uh, they are in a very bad situation, not only in Europe, uh, around the world, but our focus is, is Europe. And we need to put measures uh, to uh, defend the nature and to recuperate and restore this ecosystem. I think it's is uh, crucial for uh, our history. Can I say something? Because it's yes. very important, people, and people need to know. <coughs> the nature restoration law is also about our health care, about clean air in our cities. But, I mean, that's also very important. Also. It's, it's not, a, and I think it goes perfectly in balance with improving our economy, um, because improving nature is good for the, let's say, the, the insects, the pollinators, it's good for for, for our trees. crops, it's good for our trees, it's good for Rivers. farmers at the end of the day. And hence, it's good for us because it's good for life. And what would you say, looking at how the Conservatives behaved on the nature restoration law, would you say that their behaviour is part of a wider problem? I mean, I really don't know. I mean, it's up to them to uh, look at. What I see is that we tried, and especially Cesar, he really tried to accommodate all the comments and all the, let's say, questions that were uh, uh, that were raised by the uh, Conservatives. And I, even in the Envy vote, not even in the penalty, even before that, if you looked at the compromises, we, I mean, Cesar tried to accommodate them substance-wise. But if you do not look at substance and uh, you walk away from the negotiations, then it's very hard. I mean, after the plenary votes, I heard some Conservatives state, state that they were quite pleased with the outcome. Pleased mm -hmm. without, and still they voted against. So then I questioned them, did you read the outcome after the vote? Or were you not aware of the outcome during the vote? And if so, why did you vote against? I mean, this is a crucial question, and we hope they come back to the table. And my compliments to César for his hard work and his patience because patience was really needed in this file. But talking about patience and also what you mentioned, compromise, that, that sort of you try to work on the, on the compromise with them. What would you say actually happened? What happened in the parliament and how did the conservatives try to stop this law? This is a matter uh, more than a nature restoration law. I think inside the rights in this parliament, in Europe in fact, uh, they have a fight about the votes and I think they are making a very, very big mistake. The uh, central politics, the progressive politics, are the majority in Europe. Then in the Conservative, what happened really? It's a change of the strategy. And in the nature restoration, I think because uh, always the Conservative uh, wants to uh, put the, the policies, the, the measures, slow and slow. But in this case, the climate change, we don't have time. Today, today is late. Yeah, but I mean, yes, the please. problem is that when political <coughs> groups in the middle start polarizing, then they're feeding the extremes. And when your party has an identity crisis, which is fair, I mean, I think many political groups have to want to reinvent themselves to really see where they stand. But if it just means you're copying, let's say, the more far-right parties when it comes to their political position, then basically you're underlining that position and you're not reinventing yourself. Can you tell me, in a nutshell, what is 
good in the nature restoration law and why does it help the people? Why did the S&D group and in particular the two of you really fight for it so hardly? I mean, nature is something we should all fight for to improve because it's good for us, for earth, for life itself. I mean, that's what I said. Good for farmers, good for the animals, etc. Since 1994, we have the Bird and Habitat Directive. If we see what European countries have done with it, it's not really, let's say, super ambitious. But, but, but if we look at the results. And that's about protecting, let's say, uh, protected areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most areas in the EU are really bad. Like more than 80% is in a bad shape. I think in the Netherlands, it's even yeah. 90%. And now we say, like, protecting certain protected areas is not enough. What we should do is in the future, when we, because we know that climate change is real in order to, uh, to uh, take measures uh, uh, to, to, to stop uh, the, the heating of earth, then nature-based solutions are the best way. Planting trees in our cities, improving forests outside our cities. They are uh, like almost um, a, a, a biological echo within, especially within the city. So, Telling that in the future, at some moment, we will start restoring nature is, I think, something we should all underline instead of fight. Yeah. And, and this is, I think, the best message we have. And that's thanks to CESA, that we as EUs, if we can finalize the trilogues, will say that we take nature seriously, not only the protected areas, but all nature in the EU, and we will do whatever we can to restore our seas and restore our nature on land. That's something beautiful. It's a beautiful, positive message. <laughs> no? Definitely. Yeah. Now let's do a new section in our Take a Left podcast of the Socialists and Democrats and we have a little quiz. The Conservatives have been spreading a lot of myth as we heard about the nature restoration law. Which of the following is not an EPP claim from Twitter? Number one, it would make Santa homeless. Number two, Greta. Thunberg doesn't support it. Number three, the legislation is badly thought through. Number two, I think, no? Mohammed? I never go against Cesar, so <laughs> go for number two. Okay, number two. It is correct. <laughs> okay. Final question to you, Cesar. What is next? Uh, we'll start the, um, the negotiations. Mm -hmm. I think we will be in conditions to approve a deal mm -hmm. with the other groups. I hope PP recapacitate and we have possibilities to incorporate, to add PP in the final of the negotiation. And in December, maybe January, uh, we can have the first nature restoration law in our history and it will be, it will be for the uh, S&D. And it's a very, very achievement for the S&D group. It's a milestone. Thank you. Thank you to both of you. Okay. And Thank you. Thank you, Mocha. It was great to <laughs> talk to you. Well, there you have it. While the EPP ignored the science, with the progressive majority, we passed this important file. Thanks, Cesar. Thanks, Mohammed, for joining us. Whether you're watching us or listening, Thanks for joining us for Take a Left, the podcast from the Socialists and Democrats in the European Parliament. Il Presidente! Ma cos'è? Resolution is adopted.